But Albert Breer is now joining us, lead reporter, Monday morning quarterback. You know, it was interesting last night when I looked at the Buccaneers. The troubling part to me was not Tom Brady forgetting what down it was. It was they had 11 penalties and they couldn't protect Brady. And that's been Tampa Bay's story for a decade. They're loosey-goosey. They're never buttoned up. And I felt like Tom was getting frustrated with something he never dealt with in New England, which was lack of discipline. That was my takeaway last night, yours. Yeah, and I think you saw that in the opener, too. I mean, it's been masked the last three weeks because they won those three games. But, you know, in the opener, you saw, you know, miscues on special teams. You saw the defense jumping off sides on a fourth and short, you know. So those existed in the, the, the Buccaneers' other loss as well. And, you know, I think that because the margin for error was so much smaller last night with Mike Evans hobbled, with Chris Godwin out, O.J. Howard obviously now out for the season, um, you know, they have to have a tighter operation right now because the personnel on hand isn't quite as good as it was the last few weeks. And, um, you know, I, I'm telling you, Colin, this is something I had my radar up for, for from the beginning. He's come from a place that is so buttoned up and does things in such a specific way. It was going to frustrate him when he goes somewhere else and he sees how the other 31 live. And so I think that that's part of the growth process here. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons why when I was down there in camp, um, you know, I was there for a couple of days back in August, why it, it really was Tom Brady's operation. I think he really felt a need over the summer to take over. And, you know, he hopes that by the end of the year, you'll be able to see the results in, in a team playing a little bit more discipline than they did last night. I think the Patriots would have beaten the Chiefs if Cam Newton started. That's how strongly I felt about New England's game plan. And you know what it made me feel like? It made me feel like New England's going to be too good to get one of these top quarterbacks. They're going to win too many games this year, yep. and they're not going to do as Stidham and Hoyer, I can tell you that. You know what it made me think? Cam Newton's going to get a contract extension for a year or two with New England. I really felt that after watching that game. Am I nuts? No, no. I, and I think that they look at him as somebody who could be a future answer for them. I, 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 if I'm them, I go and try to take care of him now because I think I can get a discount, and I, I don't want to be put in a position where I've got a franchise tag him. Um, but you know, either way, I think you look at it and, and say they sign him for three or four years, Colin, right? You have your answer for right now. If you do that, you're avoiding, you know, kind of being one of these teams out in the wilderness looking for one. You don't have to make, make a massive move up to get a Trey Lance or a Justin Fields. Um, and then you, you bought yourself some time, you know, and I, Cam Newton in a way could be what Alex Smith was for Kansas city. And people forget how, how valuable he was to that whole operation. He allowed them to win. In the time being, while they found a guy that they could really build around like Patrick Mahomes. And so, I mean, best case scenario, maybe Cam Newton's your answer for the next seven or eight years. But at the very least, I think he's shown that he can, he can give you a viable answer at that position for the next three or four years while you try to sort out who your quarterback of the future is. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely believe that. They're just too darn good to get a top five yeah. or eight pick. They're not getting one of these guys. And I tell you, you, you saw Cam's value when he didn't play this Monday night because that game yep. plan was outstanding. Finally, Bill O'Brien, I think he's going to get another job. Be that as it may, you have a franchise quarterback and a franchise left tackle. I threw this out. If you want to get picks and save cap space, trade J.J. Watt. I don't, there's about yeah. four teams in this league, Albert, that could use J.J. Watt for two years. Seattle, if they could afford him. The Ravens, if they could afford him. Is, is, do you think that's viable to get picks and cap space, which you desperately need? It may be time to move off J.J. Watt. Are you talking about right now? Yeah. Because I, I think right now it might be a little difficult. Um, you know, the, the McNair family is so close to J.J. Watt, and he's been so important in the community I'm not saying they couldn't be talked into it, um, but I, I sort of have my doubts over whether or not that would be uh, viable right now, given the fact that they don't have somebody in place who's going to be the general manager going forward. If you're Cal McNair, do you trust uh, Jack Easterby to find fair value after he was part of the deals for DeAndre Hopkins and, and, and Laramie Tunsil? I mean, I think that's a fair question to ask. So I'm with you. I think that he could be a piece that they could move and get some value back for him, replenish some of the draft capital they lost over the last few years. I, I just think that, you know, in all likelihood, um, the smart play here, is, at least as far as Cal McNair would see it, is to wait until you have a new head coach and GM in place to help you make that decision. By the way, a minute left. Who do you think's the leader in the clubhouse to get that gig? 
I mean, I, you know, I know Josh McDaniels and Nick Casario's names have come up. They've got close relationships with Jack Easterby. Easterby was actually going to go to Indianapolis with Josh in 2018. And then Easterby tried to get Nick to come to Houston before the Patriots blocked it in 2019. That relationship's there. I don't know that those two guys would take that shot. They've waited so long just to be in a position where they might be reporting to Jack Easterby. And I'm going to give you the one name that I think is a little obvious, but I'll give you a little nugget of information with that. Everybody's talking about Dabo Swinney, right? And everybody connects Easterby to the Patriots. Dabo Swinney has a very close relationship with Jack Easterby. So I would not be surprised if one of Jack Easterby's first calls during this search is down to Dabo Swinney, who, of course, is Deshaun Watson's college coach, either to try to get him to come there or at least get some advice on how to handle this search. And so that strong relationship there between Dabo Swinney and Jack Easterby, I would not undersell that one. Wow, that's interesting. Senior NFL reporter, Monday morning quarterback Albert Breer, late notice today. Thanks, buddy, for stopping by. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.